Hello, my name is William, and welcome to the first ever Accelerate Summer Design Challenge. These design challenges are made to challenge you to design something, program it, and build it in order to keep improving your skills and also to keep your brain active, keep your mind active throughout the summer. So this ch design challenge is to create an RC car out of FTC components and program an autonomous drive program and teleop control mode. The car must be between 12 and seven and a half inches. That six inches is incorrect. It's 12 and seven and a half inches. And it can be any shape and any height within the dimensions. The autonomous mode should follow a track or just some pre-programmed route and teleop can help be set up however you can be you can purchase or create cv joints for the rear axle uh, a differential is recommended but there are ways to get around the requirement or well to get around not having a seat, a differential. Um, all electronic components can be anywhere within the shell, which is optional as necessary. So you should use one motor, one servo. It should be rear wheel drive, 12 by seven and a half inches, should have suspension, and you can have a shell if you want to. And so, yeah, that's it. The yeah, materials are listed. Some of those are repeat, but it's good to list them anyway. And yeah, so at this point, if you want to go off and design yours, go do that now. But if you aren't really sure where to start or you don't really know what you're doing, as these are supposed to be able to help you learn, I will go in and start making my design for this challenge. And so we're going to go to Fusion. And I'm going to start on the base. So I'm going to use construction lines and the rectangle tool to give myself a seven and a half by 12, 12 inch box. And so what this does is it gives me a point of reference as to where everything goes. I'm going to put some midpoint lines so that I know where the center and I can use those as even more references. We're just going to finish that sketch, create another sketch right on top of it. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making out my base panel. So we'll go in, get ourselves out of construction line mode, or make sure that we're out of construction line mode. And we'll make, oh, say eight inches, inches by, we'll do six and a half inch wide. And so what this is going to be, I'm going to set, grab some construction lines, go corner to corner. Put a point right there. And so what I'm doing now, if I take that point, and actually I need to go back to this sketch and create a point right there. And if you're wondering why on the first sketch, I went uh, from midpoint to midpoint 
on either sides and on the current sketch that I'm on, which is the actual body itself, I went corner to corner, is because if uh, by going corner to corner, I can constrain the entire box. Whereas if I went midpoint to midpoint, I could constrain the entire box, but it would be, well, actually no. Scratch that. I could have gone midpoint to midpoint because constraints are something like that. But makes it easier to see. So, yeah. And so I'm just going to move this dimension down a little bit, over a little bit, so that I can work around them. And so now I have. How much room on the front and back? 15 millimeters. That's not what I want to do. I'm going to set up a secondary two inches. Uh, that's probably not enough. So we're going to do six inches in the middle there. Gives me three inches. If I do a two inch tire, yeah, I could probably make that work. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the front and rear uh, the areas that the suspension and servo for steering the the differential is going to go and so what i can do since that one since this side of my rectangle is already defined as to where it is i can put a single point and make it coincident to that midpoint And then that should why did this not Ah I see what I did. This should be at the midpoint of this. There we go. Thought I set that, but oh well. And we'll do two and a half inches on this as well. Same on the front. And so that will be the body of the car. Or at least the, the base of the chassis. I'm actually going to open up Rev Robotics. This is the Rev Robotics website so that I know the dimensions of some of my some of the stuff that we'll have to fit into here. That's probably enough stuff for this sketch. We'll make it a we'll do thirty millimeters, and this way, and so by making it thirty millimeters. I can fit my battery inside the base, the base, get 
suspension connected, mount my rev hub. Do I want to do this this way? As you can tell, I didn't do much pre-planning for this. Um, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in time. Ooh, look at that fancy. Amazing features of Fusion. If you didn't know you could do that, it's kind of, it's really useful. Uh, uh, I'm going to grab myself another box. Make this one a hundred and... Sixteen millimeters by ninety-two millimeters, and if those seem like very specific dimensions, it's because they are. I'm also going to open up Go Builder's website to see the size of millimeters. Oh well, uh, thirty-two is good enough. 45.4, yeah, so that's 108, I'm going to use a construction line to tell me where So that would be there. So that would work. Probably should have planned for this more. Uh, well, you guys can really see the design process that I'm going to go through. Because I'm going to do... I guess I can use a chain. That's smaller. Yeah. I could use a chain. chain would actually be easier because I can all right we're gonna use a chain so what I can do well I know that this point isn't gonna go any farther than this so why don't I just make this the entire length of the car that's easier all right now what goes like? 108 goes there. Go back to this motor. It's 100 and 108. Add 23. 130. One. Now I could use bevel gears to make to transition the motion sideways. Make that a construction line. Um, to transition the motion sideways and then move it over to where it can be geared or, or chained or belted to the differential. Which is fine. It works. I didn't measure how wide this is. How wide is this? 49. That's fine. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So go this. Change this dimension back down to 108. And actually. And get rid of this to make it a different sketch. So, yeah, just to keep it a bit more organized. And I'm gonna make this deeper. Batteries. So, uh, let me explain what I have so far. So I have the base plate itself, which I'm gonna make large, 
it's going to be a lot taller than just like a two millimeter aluminum sheet like most RC cars are. I'm going to have the battery go inside of that. And then I'm going to have the motor and the drivetrain fit inside of it. And then I'll have the steering servo fit inside of it. So that's my train of thought right now. 113 by 90.5. I'm going to extend this to be 120. And I'm going to widen this to be 93. Just so that I could get some more stuff in there. And then I'm going to check this to make sure it's still wide enough. It's more than... Alright, so we're going to finish that sketch, and then we're going to extrude this. And I'm going to go forward and... Gosh darn it. Forward in time. Thank you. And I'm going to edit this. Get rid of that. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a shell with five, not fifteen, five millimeters. Yeah, five millimeters. And I'll probably close that down as I get more knowledge of how things are going to fit just to make sure that this is structurally sound. But this actually needs to be taller, doesn't it? 30, so I need to be... We'll do 40... We'll do 45. And so I'm definitely going to be tall. Mechanical specs. 103, 143. So, it would not fit in this. I could make it fit in this. I mean, am I going to be... I'm not going to be using this area that much. So... Considering I could probably fit two entire batteries in this thing right now. Where'd the battery go? 23. So being as tall as I am. No. Fusion. I could totally fit two batteries in here. Not quite. Two batteries would be 46 millimeters tall. So I wouldn't be able to fit two in once I get all of the extra material needed to support them. Dang. But. Like, this area is useless right here, so... Oh, gosh darn it. So, this area right here... Some of this area is needed for wire management and stuff, but like, right there, that is useless. This area is useful, but I can knock it off. I can adjust it. Uh, motor and powertrain supports go through here. Suspension supports will be on the sides of these, but that'll be a different sketch. So if I do this, and then this, 
match the distance. Too bad. So I might start designing server mapping right now. Oh wait, what? A servo doesn't actually fit in that spot. That's insanity. So what I'm going to have to do, and at that point that space would be useful, or would be useless. I mean that space pretty much is useless no matter what. Because I'm going to end up running power out this wall and up. You know what I could do? I could just do there. And then if I do 103. What is 103? Three. Oh, that's not. Hmm. Well, if I do it this way, then I could just have the body width go the entire way. And so if I were to do that, This out here. Make this the entire seven and a half inches. And then just use that, like, I'll build some of the fenders and stuff into that. Then I'd probably want to make it entire length as well, but I'll work it. I'll do that. Uh, to another point.